How's it going, folks? Uh, this is Shervin back, and uh, I'm on to uh, finally do uh, a video that uh, Kieran encouraged me to do, and maybe it'll start something here. Uh, I got 10 albums uh, that uh, were originally released on the Steeplechase label uh, out of Denmark, uh, Copenhagen. Uh, and from my understanding, uh, Nils Winther uh, started it, started up the label. And I think he was just recording on his own live shows uh, at the Montmartre, <laughs> I'm going to butcher that name every time, uh, the Montmartre Jazz House in Copenhagen, and I don't know if someone talked him into it, or to just start putting him out, and so that's what he did, and uh, it took off from there, there are a lot of recordings uh, from Montmartre, uh, and studio recordings uh, in Copenhagen and a lot of these albums I have are led by uh, musicians from the US uh, who either went over to Denmark uh, permanently long-term stays, short-term stays and uh, recorded for the label. Yeah, Steeplechase. And I've got a side that's about 17 minutes. I'm hoping to be done before the side is over. So we'll start with uh, what's playing. And uh, I had to uh, show something with uh, Richard Davis, uh, who died recently last week uh, the great bassist uh, with uh, Walt Dickerson Divine Gemini and uh, this was recorded in 77 released in 78 on the steeplechase label yeah lovely stuff uh, and uh, the US uh, distribution of Steeplechase uh, was on the Inner City label. Uh, so I have a few Inner Cities here. I think three of these are Inner City, uh, which you know, they're the same. You know, they came out overseas on Steeplechase in the US on the Inner City. So you got uh, Divine Gemini, lovely Richard Davis, uh, Walt Dickerson. Dickerson made a few albums on Steeplechase. And the very first release on the label was Jackie McLean, live at Montmartre, 1972. Uh, I don't have that one, but I do have this uh, Jackie McLean quartet, Dr. Jackal, uh, which... Uh, at the time was an archival release because this was recorded in 1966 at the Left Bank in Baltimore. Uh, so Nils Winther, I guess, got these tapes from McLean and uh, was able to put them out. This came out in the late 70s, even though the recordings are from 66. And this has uh, McLean on alto, of course, Lamont Johnson bass, Scotty Holt, or Lamont Johnson piano, Scotty Holt bass, and Billy Higgins on drums. Yeah, this is, there's a companion album to this called Tune Up with a blue cover. Uh, I don't have that one yet, uh, but I think this is the only live document of McLean during that era. He was either just done or winding down his time on Blue Note. And I don't know of anything else that has come out live during that time, mid-60s. Uh, 
uh, so yeah, this is a great document. A lot of energy here. Uh, the recordings at the left bank, I, you know, the st stuff I hear isn't sonically that great, but uh, it's good enough. Uh, so yeah, Dr. Jackal. And uh, the first one I have, I'll show on Inner City, is uh, Divine Revelation. So we had Divine Gemini, Divine Revelation. Andrew Hill. Uh, this was recorded in 75. Uh, what was that studio's name? CI uh, Recording Studio in Copenhagen is where the studio stuff uh, was recorded. Uh, man, this is an excellent record. Uh, recorded July 10th, 1975 with uh, the really great under-recorded Jimmy Voss on reeds. Uh, sometimes he's credited as James Voss. Uh, I don't know how many sessions he actually did, but not very many, I don't think. Uh, he's actually on a Charles Ireland live at the Lighthouse uh, that's pretty smoking. Uh, so Jimmy Voss, soprano, alto, and flute. Chris White, bass and uh, Fender bass and Leroy Williams on drums and there they are there yeah great great record really really scorching at times uh, there's a side long side two divine revelation 25 minutes according to the back 25 minutes exactly and uh, Hill does a, a beautiful rendition of here's that rainy day on solo oh yeah <laughs> Really great. Here's That Rainy Day is one of those songs, it's hard to resist uh, getting a record that has that on it. Yeah, this is Inner City, US, printed in USA, it says right here at the top. Inner City label. Yeah, I've never seen a steeplechase copy of this one. Uh, but a lot of these, uh, I just, Take what I can find and uh, the most recorded artist on the label is Dexter Gordon I don't know exactly how many steeplechase albums he has I mean, at least a dozen maybe close to 20 uh, I have a few and uh, this one and a lot of those releases by Gordon are live at Montmartre <laughs> a good number of them uh, but this one's a studio one, and this to me is the most interesting album of his during that time. Uh, this is just a trio, Lullaby for a Monster, with uh, Niels Henning Orsted Peterson and Alex Real. You'll see Alex Real, the drummer on a lot of these, uh, and Niels Peterson. Yeah, just a trio, and uh, some originals and uh, standards, Born to be Blue. Green Dolphin Street, great renditions. And Niels Henning Orsted Peterson, his bass on here is just so prominent. His strings, I mean, I don't know much about bass playing uh, other than just what I hear and how I feel and how I take it. His, his bass playing, the strings just seem so loose the way he plays that bass. And uh, they revisit Tanya on here. Uh, from One Flight Up uh, 10 years earlier, 11 years earlier. Uh, yeah, it's a 10 minute version. Trio, it's just Gordon, and Gordon, ha you know, by this time, 1976, he hasn't really lost anything. And uh, there are the sidemen there. Yeah, Lullaby for a Monster, this is fantastic. There's another one that's a quartet with uh, Billy Higgins, I believe, uh, Niels Peterson, and Philip Catherine. That's an excellent album, too. Lullaby for a Monster. And uh, another one, I have the inner city version, is this Ken McIntyre. Man, I showed the Ken McIntyre in the Coltrane video. And I've been playing this. This is really, <laughs> really something. Uh, with Kenny Drew, Bo Steiff, uh, Alex Real, 
Bo Steif, Alex Rio are uh, uh, from Denmark. Steif is on a lot of sessions. And Kenny Drew, to me, really makes his session. I haven't heard Kenny Drew play the piano like this on anything else I've heard by him. He's just so progressive. And you can just tell the confidence that he plays with. And he's playing, uh, I don't really want to compare him to anyone else, but, you know, because it's, his comping is kind of like McCoy Tyner. Uh, and, but not really, but I kind of think of McCoy Tyner. Uh, but yeah, this one is excellent. I really like this album a lot uh, better than the other album I showed. I can't remember the title, Home. And I think he has one more on Steeplechase. Uh, but to give, give you an idea about McIntyre, he plays five different instruments on here throughout eight numbers. And he features five different instruments. And the way the album flows, and he's bringing in stuff like oboe, bassoon, bass clarinet, alto, and flute. And so he's showcasing a different instrument practically every song, but it doesn't interrupt the flow of the record at all. A lot of times on these kinds of albums, uh, it can interrupt the flow because it's just like, yeah, we're just, okay, now I'm going to display the oboe. Now I'm going to display this. But yeah, just front to back, this thing is really nice. Uh, again, originals with standards uh body and soul lush life he does lush life with a bassoon intro solo bassoon intro which is really cool uh, little latin mercedes and a version of naima is also on here and round midnight sunny moon for two uh, his originals are really you got bootsy mercedes and arabelle which is liberia spelled backwards yeah this this one is highly recommended um clifford jordan has a lot of stuff on steeplechase uh the highest mountain uh he's got these volumes uh but i decided to take <clears throat> this one out uh live at the half note uh a rare non Copenhagen recording, Half Note in New York, uh, 1974, with Cedar Walton, Sam Jones, and Albert Heath. Uh, yeah, this is just pure, just straight smoking stuff. He does Holy Land, Glass Bead Games, St. Thomas, uh, Rhythm and uh, Highest Mountain. I think that might be the one, volume one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see here. Let's just show the Steeplechase label. They've always kind of had the same label, either that or some variation of it. And Steeplechase, you know, the, in the 70s, it seemed like jazz was growing more in Europe than it was in the States. Because uh, if you just look at the labels that were putting stuff out, uh, you know, a lot of people think of ECM, uh, you know, as... Yeah, the standard bearer for European labels. But there were so many others. Steeplechase, Enja, uh, Black Saint, Soul Note, which uh, was another thread. Uh, later, FMP. But the thing with Steeplechase, uh, they didn't really put out music that was free, necessarily, or even avant-garde. Uh, just really good quality musicianship, maybe a little on the verge, dipping their toes in the avant-garde uh, things, but also old-timey stuff, or old-timey players. Uh, <clears throat> this one, I had no idea who Claude Williamson, or Claude Williams, was when I bought this, however many years ago. And... I still don't really know much about him. I don't know if he played with Basie, but he goes way back on uh, violin. And I bought it mainly because it's on Steeplechase. 
uh, and I was curious, and he plays violin. And this has Horace Parlan on piano, and uh, Lars Black on guitar, Hugo Rasmussen bass, and Hans Nemand drums. And these are all mainly standards, how high the moon, all the things you are, get happy, things ain't what they used to be, there is no greater love. Yeah, really interesting, he's a, he's a swinger. He swings. This album swings. And uh, this has the old Rick Ballard import sticker. Uh, <laughs> I think Buttery was talking about that. Um, another kind of old timer, and this is an excellent one. Uh, I think, I don't know if this was his final recorded session, uh, but he died within a few months after this live gig or lives. Uh, you know, if he had a, you know, engagement, however long, at Montsmart, April 1973. I think he died in August or September of 73, Ben Webster. And Webster lived in Europe for a number of years, maybe his last 14, 15 years. And this is a great album. He still got it with uh, Ole Kolk. Hansen piano, Bo Stife bass, Alex Real drums. Willow Weep For Me is on here. That's another standard. You know, it's hard to resist when I see that, not getting it. Uh, old folks, exactly like you. There's Ben, that yeah, classic. And uh, now the side's over. Uh, another inner city copy is uh, Watch Out. Renee McLean, Jackie's son, and I'm pretty sure this is the first album as a leader. And uh, 1975, it was recorded at the CI uh, recording studio. Uh, this is a sextet. There are the players. You got Renee McLean. He plays a number of reeds, alto, soprano, tenor, flute. Danny Coleman, who I don't really know, trumpet, flugelhorn, Buster Williams, bass, uh, Freddie Waits, drums, Nathan Page, guitar, and Hubert Eves, piano. Uh, yeah, I don't know Danny Coleman. I, maybe they don't know Danny Coleman either, because it lists him as Danny Coleman here, but then the little paragraph feature on each musician, they call him David Coleman. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is excellent. I like his, he plays soprano. Uh, McLean plays soprano on a couple of tracks. I like his soprano playing a lot on this. And this is like close to, you know, a little more uh, adventurous, a little more avant leanings. Uh, but Nathan Page uh, really shines, especially on side two. Because the title track leads off side two, and that's written by Page. Uh, yeah, this is a killer one. Another one I've never seen, the Steeplechase version. And uh, the last one of the ten I have here is Johnny Diani, Angolan Cry, uh, from 85. And this has John Chikai, Johnny Diani, Billy Hart, and Harry Beckett on trumpet. And flugelhorn. Billy Hart just kicks ass on this. Yeah, Pianoless Quartet, recorded in 85. Uh, it's kind of a plain back sleeve there. Diani made a number of albums on De Steeplechase. Chikai has, uh, I was almost going to show it, but I've shown that a lot, I think, with Pierre George and Nils Peterson. Uh, yeah. This is an excellent album, 85. And uh, just a bonus here, because it's kind of a quirky thing. Uh, um, this is one of two records I have that the wrong record is in the cover. Uh, I thought I was getting this. Uh, Nils... Peterson Trio with Philip Catherine and Billy Hart live at Montmartre. And this was used, and I always look for the condition and everything, but I didn't pay close enough attention. 
you know, it's a steeplechase record. But the album is actually first set, Cedar Walton Quartet. Uh, so I keep it because it's a great album. And uh, it's the only thing I have with the tenor saxophonist, Bob Berg. And he really <laughs> impresses me on this. Yeah, great tone, real rugged tone on this. And this has Sam Jones, Billy Higgins, Cedar Walton. So yeah, I'm just throwing this in there because it's kind of a odd thing. Like I said, I only have one other album like this, wrong record, you know, wrong jacket over the record. Uh, and there they are. Who's not the actual band you're hearing. But yeah, I'd like to find this. All right, that's it. Ten steeplechase. And uh, maybe uh, people have some more. Everyone take care.